All right, Fox, on top of two dramatic developments we're following, the president about to speak to an audience. A 40% off every program. All right, Fox, on top of two dramatic developments we're following, the president about to speak to an audience in Granite City, Illinois, where he is going to be promoting his tax cuts. To the right of your screen, Facebook just getting cut and sliced and diced and shredded. In one day, that guy you see there lost $16 billion in market value. What is more, his company absorbed a better than $100 billion market cap hit. No company in the history of any country, anywhere, has absorbed a hit like that in one day. But in the case of Facebook, it is merely back to levels it was at a little more than a couple of months ago. So we're going to follow all of this. Welcome, everybody. I'm so happy to have you. Well, not happy if you're a Facebook shareholder, but you're still doing okay in the scheme of things. Let's get a look at what the president is going to be talking about in Illinois. We've also got Deirdre Bolton here with what everyone is talking about at the corner of Wall and Broad. We begin with Leland. Leland. Well, Neil, we're just a couple of minutes away from the president coming to this steel factory here, Granite City, Illinois, just across the river from St. Louis. And these are the folks he is going to be highlighting, the sum of the 800 new steel workers that have been brought on to this facility because of the tariffs. Uh, they've got about 800 new employees, say that could go even more. Obviously, the thing the president's not going to be talking about is the jobs lost because of his tariffs, about 150 or so that we found just about two hours south of here because of the very same tariffs. The president really trying to sell very hard the success of the tariffs. We just had the president of U.S. Steel up here talking to his workers that this is a U.S. Steel plant, and he kept talking about how much he needs his workers to put political pressure not only on state reps, but also on their congressmen and on their senators and on the president president to deny the exclusions that so many other companies are trying to ask for from the steel tariffs. It's very clear that he views the political pressure of his steel workers getting new jobs as something that they need to keep up on the administration as they're facing so much of a political backlash from those who are losing jobs, whether it be farmers or other manufacturers who are using the steel that's now more expensive, but as we're being told, American made, Neil. All right, thank you, Leland. Uh, great work as always, my friend. Now let's go to Deirdre Bolton on what happened to Facebook. What happened to Facebook? So that $100 billion plus route that you mentioned, Neil, the biggest loss in stock market history. So the stock's worst day ever by far, by far. So it plunged 19%. That's where it closed 18, just over 18 on the downside. So Facebook missed a quarterly revenue forecast, but what was more concerning to investors was the outlook statement. So the social networking company is saying that its revenue growth rate will slow from last year. Now, part of the reason Facebook is going to be investing more to focus on privacy, right? It's going to be spending a lot more money to accomplish its goals. The CFO making a very specific statement saying it's going to be investing billions of dollars per year, improving safety and security after that bruising period where Facebook's role in enabling fake news and election meddling came up. One contextual point, though, the company's previous worst single day performance, you have to go all the way back to July 2012. That is when the stock fell more than 11 and percent. And that was after the company talked about mobile advertising and selling more mobile advertising. And so you saw how that stock got punished at that point. Uh, but it is worth noting that that is now 90 percent of Facebook's business. And by the way, today's drop, well, that makes Mark Zuckerberg, the founder and CEO, his personal net worth down about $16 billion. That, of course, is according to Forbes. But, Neil, there are a lot of people, of course, saying, listen, this company still has 2 billion global users. Okay, this is a hiccup, and they will figure it out. So you have your optimists and your pessimists, so as always. Know. Fair and balanced. Uh, Fair and balanced. Uh, Deirdre, uh, thank you very much. Deirdre Bolton. And uh, by the way, uh, that tech sell-off, by the way, uh, contributed about a 1% hit in the NASDAQ, something that might absorb some of the pain for those who are wondering about this entire sector. Uh, news after the bell that a Amazon earned about $5.07 a share. The estimate was for $2.50. Now, why 
do I mention Amazon in the context of what was going on today? A lot of people were hoping that that would provide some salve, some hope for the markets, that Facebook is its own unique deal, that this sell-off was uh, sort of targeted there and only there, and everyone can calm down. Is that the case? Uh, Charles Payne is here. we got trader Alan Nuckman and Melissa Armo of the Stock Swoosh. All right, Charles Payne to you and the Amazon News. I know I'm just breaking that on you here, but a lot better than expected. Wow. What do you think of that? <laughs> just... If this number is, 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 you know, once they, you know, sometimes there's a lot of uh, factors and they, they come up with a real number. But, Neil, the street was looking for $2.53. This is a double that. Uh, last year, it was 40 cents, just to tell you the exponential growth that they've enjoyed. Also, to your point about the influence on the market, in the first half of the year, of all the S&P gains, 36% came from Amazon. Now, consequently, only 8% came from Facebook. Probably why we saw something of a m muted response. If this is real and the guidance is just this strong, we're going to have a monster session back in these tech names by, uh, tomorrow morning. You know, Alan, when you look at this and, uh, you know, now they're starting to pick apart who's who in this whole tech bunch. And, right. and maybe uh, it's way too soon to say give up on Facebook. Uh, uh, the stock is still up. Uh, you know, appreciably, to put it mildly, uh, back lev to levels it was at a, a couple of months ago. Having said that, right. the haves and have-nots in that sector, who, who are the haves? Well, obviously, Amazon's come a long, long ways, but we were just at all-time highs in Facebook. You know, a pullback was natural. It, it wasn't the numbers, the earnings numbers. They were great. They had a lot of growth. It was the guidance and just talking about falling profit margins. They're going to make money at, at less uh, a growth rate than, than what they are right now. So I like Apple here at these levels. We just made new highs in Apple. And if you look, Apple and, and, and Facebook, for whatever reason, have been pro trading at roughly the same price for many, many months until this recent breakout in Facebook. Facebook essentially gave up its gains in 2018. Now we'll see what happens. But they're still up multiple hundreds of percent uh, in the last few years. So tech is definitely not over. The 8050 is the NDX target, which is about 9% above where we are right now. If you look at the decline that we had in February and that full V recovery, you add that on top. So we still have a lot more upside in tech. All right. And by the way, Amazon uh, shares are trading after hours to uh, uh, another 4% here. So it might cushion the blow uh, as, as people sort of assess the tech uh, sector. Uh, Melissa, what do you think? I think definitely the market didn't show the negative reaction to Facebook today. Facebook is kind of its own beast right now. It dropped significantly over 40 points from last night, and the market really rallied from some tariff news that came out right into the close yesterday, and we did hold a lot of those gains from the trading today despite the drop-off in Facebook. No, no, I, I'm glad you pointed that, Melissa, because the Dow itself up about 112 points, S&P 500, uh, minus the tech side, was doing quite fine, thank you. And Charles Payne, one of the things you had alluded to, and, and Melissa touched on very nicely this trade, the perception that the president is more pragmatic than his rhetoric seems to indicate, uh, willing to, to, to move the ball forward with the Europeans, a sign maybe the same will apply to China, but the worries about that eased a little bit. Where, where do you see all that going? There's no doubt it eased a little bit, and uh, it's on to the big fights, uh, and the real big fight is the U.S. versus China, but now per perhaps we'll have the EU settled, EU on our side. Also, the liquid natural gas part of the deal, absolutely phenomenal, big pushback against Russia. And, and, and I think one thing that not, there's not getting enough press is maybe a retooled NAFTA sometimes in the next several weeks, maybe less than two months. That would be absolutely huge. Those are our biggest trading partners, and it would be wonderful if we can get those done. So the, the trading stuff may fade away, and we'll get the focus 100 percent on the underlying fundamentals of this economy. You know, Alan, that's one of the areas that the president pounds in Iowa uh, earlier and now in Illinois um, and, and, and countless stops uh, that, that have this, uh, this notion that, look, um, this fixation on tapes and everything else and who said what to whom and uh, whether I was uh, could have been more in your face with Vladimir Putin. Look at the economy. Look at these earnings. Look at the backdrop. Uh, look at the jobs that are being gained. That's the purpose of these of these trips. That's the purpose, again, uh, of, of, of pretty much everything this president is doing when he's on the stump. What, what's your read on that from an investment perspective? Um, I would agree there is a, maybe a method to the madness. I'm about results. I don't necessarily need to know how we get there, but we've been in a strong bull market for many, many years, and it's all about earnings. Uh, this, a lot of these things that could have been distractions have now been set aside, and what you've seen repeatedly is the market sell off on the fear, but then when the reality hits and the actual uh, you know, policy is announced or, 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 or the, the issue is dealt with, 
you see the markets, the buyers come back in. So we've seen that time and time again. This was another example with the, the uh, you know, EU. So we'll look for that to continue to happen. That's how the markets are reacting to the president in this, in this time of amazing uncertainty. But you have to focus on the facts. The facts are that we've got every economic metric is strong. And now that we've got the dollar stopped going up here with a key reversal top last week, making new one-year highs and a lower weekly close, that could really be the next catalyst for yep. all these markets. The dollar uh, decline would be very, very helpful to everybody. You know, Melissa, when you look at this, we should explain it, but we get back to Facebook and all this, you know, the, you know, the bigger something gets, the harder it will fall. I understand that. And just to explain to a lot of people watching that the, the 100 and, uh, you know, 14 plus billion dollar hit that Facebook uh, had today was the biggest loss in stock market history for a single company in a single day. You'd have to go back to Intel in September 2000 when it dropped 90 uh, million dollars in market cap on that particular day. That was just as the whole internet bubble or whatever people were calling at the time seemed to be getting pierced. But is it your sense this is a Johnny One Note? In other words, Facebook's unique issues, the privacy issues and all of that, are uh, that's Facebook. It's not endemic to technology. It, it's certainly not in the NASDAQ. What, what, how do you tell your clients to to get, get a grip in the middle of something. Well, I wouldn't run back out and buy Facebook tomorrow, even if it rallies with Amazon in the market. I'm telling you that the, the, the drop that happened isn't good, and they've had a lot of negative publicity this year. They've weathered the storm, that's for sure. They made new highs last night over 218, but I'm telling you they've had a lot of issues. And so they are kind of in their own separate bucket because they have some problems. That If you bought the stock over 180, where a lot of people bought in 200, then you were down this morning. So I wouldn't run back out and buy it. Let Facebook prove itself let it prove itself that it can fix some of these problems before you go out and buy it all right uh, Charles Payne you know Ivanka Trump uh, has been traveling with her father for this trip first in Iowa now uh, in Illinois much of the theme of these remarks have been and, and, and a lot of these have happened during your mind show on FBN that uh, uh, the backdrop is a good economy the backdrop is a strong company and corporate earnings that have more than handily beaten the street again <laughs> you know Facebook notwithstanding sure. so so just give me a sense of that backdrop. Let me, let me put it in perspective because one of the things that uh, investors talk about are the lower taxes and fewer regulations. Now, the pushback, the political pushback on that is, well, it's only benefiting the stock market or it's only benefiting billionaires. I can tell you in the first quarter of this year, buybacks, a, a contentious issue, were up about 43% year over year. Expenditures on capital X, on CapEx projects, we're talking factories, big investments made to last three to 30 years, up 200% nil, 270% for manufacturing. All those hard hats you see there, they're making big money and they're getting big jobs across the heartland of this country. All right. Uh, thank you guys very, very much. The president has now arrived at this venue in Granite City, Illinois, to talk things up. He has teased uh, more often than not uh, the good economic numbers, in, including what is due out Friday morning, perhaps one of the more seminal events uh, of this economic.